Okay, here we go. The Panda Mega Show. He's about to get crazy and wild. Stay for a while. Don't touch a radio dial. The Panda Show. Kicking it back. Sports talk. Listen to that and stay tuned for some giggles and laughs. Go. <laughs> Listen, for years, all our lives, they've been telling us to go out and buy stuff that use energy. You know, all the electrical stuff. They got electric toasters, electric ovens, electric stove. Electric stereo, electric TV, electric race, electric hair blower, electric knives, electric every damn thing. Not to mention the cars. And now, after all the big corporations there make the billions and billions of dollars worth of profits, and after telling us for years that we can't live without this junk, now they tell us that we gotta live without it. The country is going straight into the dumper. <laughs> Welcome to the Planet Mikey Show. You know, I saw that show not that particular episode but i i watched all in the family being taped live when i was in los angeles in 1977 it was a great experience while i was out there i was also on a game show on abc and i watched the premiere editions of three's company it hadn't been on tv yet they were taping it i don't know who the hell those people were you know but i watched it because i had tickets and you were there yeah i had tickets oh did we start Yes. Yeah, the, the podcast is rolling. Mm-hmm. What episode is this, Ben? 121. I see. Okay. Di- now, divide 121 by 11. What do you get? 11. I uh, see. Brought to you by MyPillow.com, where you can use the promo code PLANET and save big money. Ooh, yeah. They have deep discounts when you use the, uh, the Planet Mikey promo code, which is PLANET. I'm wearing the slippers right now. I can see that. Yeah. You should have put on something else, though. This is a little weird. <laughs> oh, well, you know. <laughs> it's a podcast. Where's your my underwear? Uh, we, I have a topper, pillows, yep. Giza sheets, doggy beds. Yep. I have everything. I have yes. I have my slippers, and yes, we are sponsored by my pillow. It's good stuff. We'll tell you about it. Ben, meanwhile, is due to give us a report on his first ever acquisition of a my pillow last week. Ben, how'd you sleep? Fan fucking tastic. <laughs> Jesus, right out of the box, he's got to use the f bomb. Just like that. You know? Sorry, I shouldn't have said fantastic. Jesus, and, and you know he he slept well, but did he bother to trim the nose hair? I noticed that. What's going on with that? I thought you were growing a Hitler mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a former major league pitcher, Ed Head. And uh, along with Bill, quote, Magic Fingers Smith. My name is Bill Smith, and he puts his fingers to good use on the podcast every single week. Our weekly podcast is why why we have it every week. Uh, He has drop ins, like, for example, this is one here. There's one for you. He drops them in, and he uses his fingers to push the buttons. It's beautiful. And Ben Kitchen, AKA Cock. Mm hmm. He also uses his magic fingers to, uh, as he has since childhood, to extract giant boogers from his nostrilic membranes mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. while mm-hmm. the show is in progress. I know, man. That's bad. I'm mm-hmm. always grateful that when he's doing that over there with his finger in the nose and the big, long, t- that we're not eating, like, coleslaw or something, you know. Bill, Mike, <sighs> Mikey still doesn't know. <laughs> I didn't touch that coleslaw. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the pillow report from Ben is, is a good one. He yeah. says he likes his my pillow, and I've never met anybody that doesn't. Oh, it is unbelievable. It's, uh, it's cushy. It's really, really good. Fifteen minutes in the in the uh, I almost said the oven in the dryer. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> throw it, throw a pillow sheet over that. It's fantastic. Minutes in the oven. It was so good. Liz goes, "How'd you like it? Seriously, how'd you like it?" And I was like, "It's awesome. It's the best pillow ever." She's like, "Should we get the dog beds?" You should. Buddy's upstairs sleeping on it Buddy's right now. Buddy's got a dog bed. Is he? Anyway. Yeah. I want to tell you that we have a fabulous, fabulous, uh, and we get great. By the way, when you when you go on, uh, I think it's what, uh, Apple, iTunes, we need you to rate and comment on the podcast. We I, There's been six really, I think we got like 184 positives and six negatives, and they're all from Mutt. <laughs> Every single one of them um, is from Mutt, the, the ones that hated the podcast. Uh, if, you don't, if you're lukewarm about it, we want an honest rating, uh, right? Rate it and download it and subscribe and do stuff. Yeah. It's all free. Isn't it free, Ben? It's all free. It's all free. All right, I'm going to take a sip of this ice cold Snapple. <laughs> ah, do, you you want, do you want some recent reviews? Some Reese's what? Recent reviews? Yeah, are they good? I'll tell you only the five star ones. Yeah, go go ahead. Don't don't do any bad reviews. All uh, right, I had enough of that on Broadway. 
Uh, only podcast I look forward to every week. Keep up the great work, Mikey, oh. Ben, and Smitty. Uh -huh. All right, I'll skip that one. That Thanks, not a sis. Star one. Uh, Mikey <laughs> makes me laugh constantly. It is therapeutic. I won't be there for another hour. Mikey is the greatest on the air and right. podcast. Oh, I love how he destroys Mutt and W E. Yeah, oh, oh. I'm sorry. See that? Guys. See, oh, you guys say uh, uh, I'm too harsh on Mutt, but uh, I think people don't like him. Sorry, Mutt. I know I don't. You know, it's funny that you read these reviews, you know, yeah. uh, because in this world of broadcasting, radio, media, and all that stuff, yeah. you can be successful, or at least by no what you consider to be normal standards. Like, let's say you get, you work for a radio station, you get really good ratings. You're like number one. Oh, yeah. Like you're a performer. You can still get screwed because they might say, well, you know what, even though this guy's number one, we want to hire this girl. Well, a person. But man. Yeah. Dude. Guy. Thing. You know, and then there it can are people, happen to anybody. people in the business who'll say, well, yeah, that's radio. <laughs> oh, and you know, Smitty, you've been in radio forever and ever. The yeah. key in the radio or TV business is to not give a shit what people think. Yeah, you got to Otherwise, be, you, don't, you can't win. No, be yourself. You can't win. That's it. Yep. Be yourself at all costs. That's my motto. <laughs> you can always play the role of disc jockey. <laughs> no matter what. Um, and God knows that I've had, you know, a lot of radio experiences in my life, some of them good, some of them bad. That's what happens. What's the best thing that ever happened to you in radio? Working with mud. Oh. <laughs> the should, best thing? Should I? Yes. In radio? In radio, your I whole radio know. career. What's I don't know. the one thing that just, uh, woo, look at that. Well, because the, the early jobs I had in radio, they didn't last that long. You know, radio, when you're not paid a lot, then you, you move on really quickly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let me think. Best thing that ever happened to me in radio? Yep. Uh, it was probably, you know, when Jason Wolf said, okay, you're going to do the night show, Planet Mikey, because it lasted 11 years. Yeah. So was that your longest single show? Yeah. 11 years. I had six years in Hartford at Channel 3, six years at Neckin. Uh, you know, I had a lot of two, three-year jobs. But they know. were good jobs. Some of them were. Yeah. yeah. And some of them I went back to twice, like WCCC. You know, I did mornings when I replaced Stern. And then I went away and I programmed Rock 102. And then I went back and did mornings again at CCC afterwards. Oh. So I did it twice. So they love you down there in the no, nutmeg no, no. state? They, uh, no. The owner of the radio station banned me <laughs> for life from the building after the second time. Because what happened was <laughs> when they wouldn't give me any kind of financial consideration at all, yeah. they, I was getting shit money there, yeah. too. It was unbelievably yeah. okay. low money. Um I said, okay, well, you know, I'm going to quit. So they said, okay. You know, they were like, oh. you know, they didn't care because they were all about the exact, they had a number penciled in for that slot, and that's what they were going to pay no more. It didn't matter if it was Howard, me, anybody. They just weren't going to pay anymore. So I went in there, and I, I bulk erased the number one spot that runs every day during drive time. <laughs> with a bulk, or I took a bulk eraser, just erased it. And, I, and then when I went on the air, I said, uh, I went on the air and I said, uh, um, I, re I recorded over that cart, the one that was going to play in the morning drive of that number one spot. So people were expecting to hear a commercial. A commercial, right. The and morning instead... guy was on. Oh. <laughs> he puts it in. It says David's of Manchester, which is the club. And I had recorded over it because I knew I was out. Hey, this is the Beast of Breakfast. Uh, if you need me, I'll be at my house listening to WPLR, which was their competition. Oh. <laughs> And he ran it in morning drive, 7.20 a.m. with my voice. And I heard it. Ah, oh, yes, that was great. And then they put up a sign. No, Mike Adams is no longer allowed to be in this building. If, if you see him, call the police. Now, that's a great story. It's a true story. Yeah, that's a good one. They're all true. Every story we tell is true here. Yep. Remember the time I told you how I swallowed those six gallons of rhino vomit? <laughs> that was true, too. That happened. But Ben's got a really good look on his face right now. As he pulls out his bass. Yeah. Who'd right. you get that from? Who'd you get that from? Sting? <laughs> Sting, Paul, Paul Sting give me that bass. Um Paul oh, God, we got so much to talk about here. Do you want to shoot? What do you want to talk about? You? Oh, please, no. 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 Oh, no. Okay. It's, it's a, it's a sad, right. bad story. I'm at the point now <laughs> where I sad, don't give a shit anymore. And it's going to get better and better for me as far as, um, you know, this podcast is going to be cutting edge. I'll probably get cut. Can I ask you a question? A knife. I might fire you myself. When <laughs> did you give a shit? Well, I've had times where I uh, gave a shit. You know, when I had kids involved. I, might, I got kids I got to take care of. I got, it's important, you know. I uh, I got to have a side job now. A side hustle? hustle. Like, what would you, what would you want to do? If you could do anything. No. You going back uh, to porn? No, probably <laughs> theft. 
Oh, like a cat burglar. <laughs> if you could do anything and you knew you wouldn't fail, what would it be? Um, I would be the captain of the cheerleaders. <laughs> I always wanted that. I got all the pants at home. <laughs> all right, now I just want to quickly before we get into some serious topics here. I mm. want to I want to mention that uh, we are brought to you by My Pillow, and there's a deal that we're offering. Yep. They're offering too. I'm sure you've heard about the uh, the My Slippers from from uh, Bill Smith. I'm wearing them right now, and they're comfortable. Well, that's their, one of their big promotions right now is that they've come up with Mike uh, Lindell has designed the new My Slippers, and they are truly unbelievable. Yep, and they're nice, and they're suede. They can be suede. Yeah. They're sassy <laughs> looking. Not like, not like me. Your I, foot slides right in, and then it's comforted with that nice little uh, memory foam, but it's nice, firm memory foam. Right. Right. Well, he and he, he took two years to develop. The, these are foot, this is footwear that's designed to wear indoors and outdoors. Yep. And you can wear them all day because they're so comfortable. It doesn't matter where you go. You, just, you don't have to change. Just keep them on. They're made with my pillow foam and the, the impact gel so that your legs and feet don't get fatigued. True. Qu- quality leather suede. Yep. Faux fur linings, but it feels like fur, and it sure looks like fur. It's fine. You'll feel like you're walking on a cloud. Uh, so go to, uh, uh, it's it's mypillow.com is the website, yep. and there's a little box that says radio, TV specials, and you click that, and then you put in planet, P-L-A-N-E-T, and you'll get 40% discount. By the way, wow. deep discounts on everything. The toppers, the Giza sheets, everything that they make, and the great products from MyPillow. Go to MyPillow.com and use the code word PLANET or call 800-865-0738. That's 800-865-0738. Use the same promo code PLANET when you get on there. Um, Ben Kitchen, do you know who Dr. uh, uh, Veronica Ivey is? No, I do not. Well, he, she, I say, she, I say, she. He used to be, she used to be a he. Okay, it's a transgender woman uh, who is now the world champion, mm. a bicycle racer for I think two hundred meters or whatever. Like she's, wow. He, I see. Here's where I'm torn. I don't know. There's a picture, and she's he. She's standing with the other two winners. Yeah, and she's like six four. <laughs> and how tall are the other two winners? The guy. He. His name was Reese. And he decided to become a woman, changed his name to Rachel uh, McKinnon. Her real name was McKinnon. Okay. Then he decided, okay, I'm going to be Rachel McKinnon. He had a transgender situation at the age of 29, changed his name then to Veronica Ivy. Why? To avoid the public ridicule he was receiving after, uh, you know, his uh, athletic uh, success. Yep. So I saw this person on TV, and she was saying, oh, you know, this is fair. That we could, yeah. Oh, we should be able to race against women. Okay, and I'm thinking, well, no, it's not. It's not really fair. That's my opinion, and I, and I want everybody to be happy, you know, and do whatever you want to do. But when you make other people unhappy because you're doing your happiness thing, then it's wrong. And the the whole concept is: should transgender former men with the same physical stature and hormonal makeup be able to race against women who we know from, especially from a hormonal point of view, and and a physical presence point of view, they can't really generally compete with men on a one-on-one basis, depending on the sport. Yep. I think billiards they could probably in bowling, but you know, not when it comes to something physical. like this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, you don't see a football player. Imagine if a football player, well, I don't know. So the question is, is it fair? And then there, this guy, Tommy O'Brien was writing about down in Connecticut. Connecticut, they have an issue with this yeah. because they've had uh, their champions have all been transgender guys winning in the track events. So the women that have trained are now just out of the picture. But Tommy O'Brien wrote this little column. He said, you know, I was recalling my days playing youth hockey. There were two times my team played against a girls hockey team. Both times our coach gave us the same prep speech. Do I sound like him? That was pretty good. Okay, boys, we're playing against girls today. Be nice. Don't score more than 10 goals. That's what he told the team. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Both games ended 10 to nothing because they he told them not to score more than 10. Okay. They played both games. And they, they were both 10 nothing. Now, uh, he's thinking, as a player, he goes, my skills were not miraculous. However, if I had been allowed to play on a female team, I could have led my team to a championship in a girls' youth hockey league. How is that considered to be fair? Your thoughts? It's not fair. What are they going to do about this? Transgender, it, it, transgender... It, it, Men who trans uh, to, to transform into women and, and vice versa, I'm, I lost the word, they should form their own teams. Well, right. Just have all trans teams where, you know, either way, I went from this side to this side. Or it doesn't. So it would be like a, there's a, 
the the boys track team, there's the girls track team, there's the trans track team. Sure. Yeah. If, if that's the yeah, I mean that's only fair. Right. Yeah. I don't know what I just don't See, know. See, I think part part of the problem is, you know, that community isn't in full align with what exactly they want whereas someone like if someone transitions from a boy to a girl they want to be thought of as a girl and yes. then some of them are like no i want to be thought of as trans mm -hmm. you know so it, it makes it even more difficult to try and figure out how to kind of answer that question but i i mean that's at least a solution that i think is somewhat palatable yeah it's the best solution that's been on the table yeah, yeah so. but when you talk about biology and uh, if you don't believe in god what, if you, you know. if you don't believe in god then you say well this is what this is it's a science that's what that is if you believe in god you say this is what god made and it doesn't matter. You're still getting to the same point where to change that is a whole new world of science. And it's not, it's just, I just, not, it's, I'm all about fairness. You know, that's all I care yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, we have a, a commercial. I had a nightmare <laughs> about, I watched this commercial with Rachel Ray on it. Uh, now, you know that Rachel's gotten bigger. And I'm not she's talking She's a lovely about woman. More fame. I'm talking about she's just gotten bigger. Um, <clears throat> someone should take away her own her own cookbooks from her, but but God bless her. You know she she's enjoying life and she's very very rich. I heard stories about her though from the we've north all, end of Boston. No, we've all heard yeah. stories. Anyway, I I watched this commercial. Then I had a nightmare about it. The commercial is Rachel Ray. I'll, I'll just we can play it for you, and then I'll tell you what my nightmare was. This is the commercial with. <laughs> It's a commercial for her dog food, yeah, yeah. or pet food brand, Nutrish. And a bunch of co-stars that are all animals. All right, let's play this. Stew and creamy seafood bisque. So, who's hungry? I said, who's hungry? <laughs> Pets love Rachel. Yeah, yeah, and they do, and it's good food and all that stuff, and she's a wonderful person. But my nightmare was this. She's standing there in front of 30 dogs and a couple of cats. And she's saying, who's hungry? Who's hungry? Come on. And my nightmare was that all of a sudden she said that and all the dogs jumped down and just started biting and eating Rachel Ray. <laughs> they, they were ravenous. You know, they starve these dogs for these commercials anyway, so they look more hungry when they eat the food. What's that? I don't know. What the hell is going on? What do you got? Oh. What do you got? Is that your plumbing? Are we recording your plumbing? I was going to say, what's going on oh, over this, Smitty? I think it, it's Rachel Ray. Being eaten? Yeah. <laughs> I thought she just moaned. All right. That's terrible. <laughs> All right, so. Way to go, magic fingers. No, but Sorry. here's the thing. You think about it. If there's 30 hungry dogs and Rachel Ray says who's hungry, what better possibility could there be than a, a fully plump Rachel Ray out there for all of them to share? Right? How dare you? Now, the only, there you go. The only way Back they, on your game, Bill. <laughs> the only way they could do better is to have Sally Struthers out there. I, I actually have a Sally Struthers story. Would you like to hear? You do? I don't know if I do. Go ahead, Sally. For years, Sally Struthers' commercials for Save the Children, with their heartbreaking images of children, were all over the television. Struthers revealed Monday on a podcast that she stopped working as an ambassador for the organization and another similar one after 35 years of a terrifying experience. It happened when she had flown to Uganda on a small plane to meet one of the kids she was sponsoring. They brought the child from his village, which was quite a few hours away. He had traveled to come meet the sponsor to meet me, and I made some commercials with him, and then I played with him, and I brought him toys and balloons, and suddenly a roving band of gorillas came out of the bushes and asked where he was from. These were guerrilla warfare guys with guns, not actual gorillas. And they decided that we had kidnapped him, and they were going to shoot all of us. <laughs> Anyway, the priest, who happened to speak the same language as the men, instructed Struthers to back away without turning her back to them, and they all survived. But it was a turning point for the All in the Family actress. She thought, I've been on so many little airplanes that could have crashed in so many situations. I've come back with hepatitis from trips. I thought, what am I doing? I've got a child, a real-life child of my own, and I'm going to make her an orphan. I can't do this anymore. Plus, we ran out of cheeseburgers. <laughs> so she stopped doing it. Yeah. And then, uh, but she, one thing she did not stop doing is eating the food. 
She all the food for Save the Children. That's what happened. She ate it all. Oh, man. Sad, isn't it? Sad for the kids. Ben's over here going, what's wrong with you? What is wrong with you? <laughs> so I thought we could do a couple new podcasts. Uh, and I got a... a Okay, here's a couple ideas, you guys. I want to ask you guys what you think. And would the people out there listening to this podcast listen to those podcasts if they were good? If they're actually good? Oh yeah. Unlike one somebody, of them yeah. is to be a media critic. Yeah. No, we could all three be media critics together. We could have a panel of media critic uh, critics. Can I start by taking a hot dump on Aaron Rodgers as Jeopardy host? Oh, well, sure, but, oh, but the sucks. show it hasn't actually officially started yet, so save that. Okay. <laughs> well, what I thought we we start the first one we do is we would critique Gresh and Mutt. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. Um, but how about a media critic show where you do the TV stations, local the network, uh, wow. local radio, TV people? Other, we could critique other podcasts. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Just go out there and rip the shit out of people just for fun. What do you guys think? It's not a bad idea. Uh, how about Crime Time? A show, a podcast, a half hour in length every single week that's devoted to the most heinous local and national crimes and their details. What's the name of the show? Crime Time. I'm sure there's like 30 of those already. Now, but not done locally where we can say, okay, in Seekonk, a guy stole a, you know, a rabbit and got shot in the foot by his cousin Ned. We could have every crime that's local because local crime isn't covered. You know, unless you're in Minneapolis. Well, yeah. <laughs> and then it's covered nationally. A lot of that stuff. I don't want to talk about that stuff going on there. Is that, that's on my list of cities I never, ever want to go to again. Portland, Oregon. Uh, Minneapolis. Yeah. Do you guys have any to add to that? Washington, D.C. Oh. I, why would I want to go to any of these cities? Right? I don't want to go. Do, oh, do we have to? So Are you making us? Field trip. Yeah, yeah, we have we to go. Mandatory field trip. The Planet Mikey field trip. I don't know if I can get so, my permission slip signed. I think you can manage that. You you got here. You know, I heard a song <laughs> I heard a song today and I I heard the guitar solo and I thought, you know, that's a really good guitar solo. So I I isolated it. Yeah. And I was wondering if you know what song this is. Ooh. Oh, I'm sure I do. I say that, Ben, with full cockiness over here, and I don't know. <laughs> I'm coming I'm here. shaking my head now. I don't think I can do right, this. I'm here in the other studio. What? Who did this? He changed studios. He did. Hold on. Stand by, We've got two studios here. It's like seven. A and B. That's a... Uh, That's... Um, small faces, right? No. You mean Maggie May? It's Rod Maggie Stewart? May, Rod That's Stewart. not oh, small it's, it's, faces. <laughs> Rod That's, Stewart. Okay. Well, he he ditched Wood. them a long time ago. Ronnie Wood played that guitar solo. Really good Ronnie job. Wood from the Small Faces? That's him. Yeah, and, but he, uh, it wasn't the Small Faces, though, because he Rod Stewart was solo <laughs> when he did Maggie May. That's correct. Fucking credit. I know. What a pain in the ass. That was actually pretty good. <laughs> okay. Here's another guitar solo. <laughs> <laughs> what guitar solo is this? By the way, one of the most overplayed songs. Yeah. Oh, that's easy. That's uh, Journey. Uh, who's sorry now? Who's crying now? That's what I meant. Okay. How about the, the, the person who was sorry was crying. Is that okay? <laughs> who's this? This is... Uh... Uh-oh. I don't know. You've heard it a million times. I know I have. I probably played today on the radio. <laughs> Blues image, Ride Captain Ride. Ride Captain Ride on the mystery mm. ship. How about this one? <laughs> oh, that's uh, Jean, Jean de la Bleu by Paul Moriart and his uh, Gigeron. Pretty good, but no. <laughs> uh, who... Who is it? Emerson, Lake, and Palmer from the beginning. And that's too old. That's not too old. That's I, when it's, it's too old. It's a, <laughs> they're all dead. How about this one? <laughs> oh, that's uh, Steely Dan. Yeah? What's the song? Uh, it's, um, it's Deacon Blues. I don't know. That's wrong. I know. It's, Rick, uh, Ricky Don't Lose That yeah, Number. Ricky Don't Lose That okay, Number. And one more. This might this might stump you. <laughs> then again, it might not. You'll say uh, stumped Ricky when he lost his too, number. It's too old. Go ahead. No. I can do this. Santana. Santana. Wrong. Okay. Um, David Gates and Bread. That's close, but no. <laughs> uh, it's uh, 
Leon Russell. No. No, I don't know. Who is it? Doobie Brothers. Yeah. Jesus <laughs> is just all right with me. Yeah, Jesus yeah. is just all right with me, too. All right, so that's yeah. our musical quiz, and you failed. Well, um, you know, those aren't, those aren't easy to do uh, under the, circun, the cir- circumstances. You know, I'm a little bit, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, it's uh, betonline.ag is the place to go to bet. By the way, have you noticed the Red Sox have been actually winning games? Yes. What's going on with that? Maybe that's a good bet to go to betonline.ag, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Football's over, yeah, but NBA's cranking, college basketball. Oh, college basketball's over. Oh, don't, don't. I'm just, I was, I was still thinking there's a, a game left. The, the NHL games are in full swing. He shoots, he scores. I love hockey because they have to give 110% every time out there on the, on the ice. <laughs> it's a rule. And plus, you get in the corners, if you don't muck and dig, dig and muck, they kick you right off the team. Oh, yeah. Plus, they say winning in hockey is you can't, you know, you can't, you got to put the puck in the net. All the coaches say that. We, we got to put the puck in the net because no hockey game has ever been won by any hockey team ever in the history of hockey without putting at least one puck in one net. That's amazing. It doesn't happen. Yeah. Anyway, uh, betonline.ag. You can you can even bet on like award shows and TV shows. Real, you can bet on reality TV happenstances. They have real updated uh, odds at, on, on real time, rather, on anything you can imagine. You can you could have bet last week on, that Ben was going to love his my pillow, and you could have won some money on that. Mm. Wow. Head to the website betonline.ag. Use your mobile device to sign up today. Get your fifty percent. Welcome bonus on your first deposit. For example, you put in 100 bucks, they give you 150. Ooh. Now you can bet all you want up to the tune of $150 and it's beautiful. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore. Don't sit on your thumbs. Get in on the action. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to use that promo code CLNS50. Is that what it is, Ben? CLNS50? CLNS50. Get, get oh, yeah. your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Bet online is your online sports book expert. BetOnline.ag. Oh, Steve's back. Steve Pasaconis. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Steve Pasaconis, booth announcer for the, the podcast. I thought he died. <laughs> Doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> no. You know, careers in this business, they, they die. They, they live die, die every day. Yeah. By the way, upcoming, we have a big announcement about that. <gasps> Uh, you know, sunrise it's the end of the world last. as we know it. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. Uh, <laughs> I have uh, I have a couple more things I want to mention. If you don't mind, you, please please do. Don't, yes. We don't mind. See, the good thing about Smitty and Ben is they don't give a shit either. No, no. no. they really don't. No. no, and you can't have a podcast where the host doesn't give a shit if the other guys in the room certainly don't give a shit either. I know. What if one of us did give a shit? It would be over. Yeah. Um, I have a little game called Dead or Alive We've done this before Dead or Alive That's right And now it's time to play Dead or Alive Here's your host Nackman Frostman Nackman Okay, time for a little uh, Dead or Alive activity I'm going to name a name. By the way, on my old TV show, we all had a thing called Always Go With Ed. Always Go With Ed. Whenever we had a pop quiz or anything, and, and if there's Ed was one of the answers, yeah. when you picked that, it was always the correct answer. Oh. And people knew it, and so they'd always say, and they'd say it. I'd say, okay, is it A, B, or C? Always Go With Ed. And they'd say the name, you know, Eddie Brissoud or whatever. So, in fact, when we had our phone number, our, our phone number on the Neckin show was... To call in live was 617-244-3344, which when we try to figure out what letters can we put in there to make a word that we can say, call 1-800-THIS, you know, or whatever. And all we could come up with was Big Ed High. (laughs) So we'd say, I'd say, call 617-Big Ed High. And people would call the show and they'd think my name was Ed. They'd say, hey, hi, Ed. You know, <laughs> no. now you would answer these calls on the air. Yes, live. live. Yeah. You know, so no delay. They'd say, hello, Ed. And I go, hello. And I just pretend I was Ed. I don't know. It was just stupid. But so always go with Ed. Now I'm going to name some guy's name Ed. And you're going to tell me on an alternating, uh, alternative basis, alternating basis, is he dead or alive? Okay. And bonus point for if you know that, he, if you think he's alive, how old is he? So these dead Eds? These are dead Eds. <laughs> some of them. They're not all dead. Because I'm asking you, Smitty, first. Yes, sir. 
Your first Ed, dead or alive, Ed Asner. Alive. Correct. Now, for a bonus point, how old is he? 89 years old. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. He's 92. Wow. Ben Kitchen. Yes. Ed. Alive. (laughs) Players will please refrain from answering the questions prior to the actual asking of the questions by the host. Ed Kookie Burns. Dead. Is correct. Yeah. He died last year. Wow. Ed Kookie Burns. Kookie, Kookie, lend me your comb. Dead. Damn. Smitty. He was the ginchiest. He was cool, though. He was a 77 Sunset Strip. That's it. Oh. Ed Ames. Oh, Ed Ames, the guy who had that famous incident on The Tonight Show with the Tomahawk. The tomahawk, because he played Mingo on uh, on the Daniel Boone Show. That is correct, Daniel. also. Now, Ed Ames. Ed Ames. Dead or alive? He's dead. He's alive. He's, 90, he's 93 years old. And you know what? He's not even an Indian. Oh, hey, man. You know Ed Ames. Who will answer? Oh, Remember yeah. him? Great voice. Yeah, the guy on The Tonight Show. Yep. Ed Ames is a Jewish guy from Malden, Massachusetts. Really? And he's 93, and he's still alive. Oh, wow. wow. Good, Good for Ed. You keeping score? Ben, yeah. did you ever see one that one. episode when uh, he took the tomahawk and threw it at he, Johnny Carson? Yeah, they had a, a painted uh, figure of a... India cowboy or something. Yep. And he threw the tomahawk and, and and it, right in the uh, right in the, the crotch. The yeah. no no special spot. It was, and it, it was, and it was pointing upward. Yeah. It was a pointing upward handle on it. It was like Johnny Carson lost it. Yeah, the audience it's went tremendous. wild. One of the great yeah. bloopers of all time. That's good. Uh, whose turn is it? Uh, it's mine. Former Pirates catcher Ed Ott. Dead or alive? Dead. He's alive and he's 69. Wow. And his is the shortest autograph, along with Ty Law, Ed in Ott. the history of baseball. Oh, it's Ed o- Ott. O-T? Yeah, O-T-T. Oh. Ed Ott. Five letters total for his name. All right. One to one after two rounds. the for that is Jared Salt of Lamachia with 17 letters. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We go now to Smitty. Yeah. Actor Ed Harris. Ed Harris is alive. Yes. He is alive. Yep. For a bonus, how much? how old is he? Ed Harris, I would say, is uh, 81. 70. Real? Oh. He's only 70? He's 70. Uh, wow. Well, he played an old man in a movie. He, he looks old. He's been yeah. playing old men since 1984. He looks old. You know, He's like Will Gear. Great actor. It's like Sparky Anderson. Yeah. Looks a lot older than he really is. Mm. Uh, he's dead, too. Eddie, uh, uh, Andy Spark- Sparky Anderson. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we go to, uh, well, this... I think this is a duck. A duck? Yeah, this is Ben's duck. He's going to get a point here. Quack, quack. Eddie Van Halen. Well, he's alive. No, he's dead. (laughs) He almost got that wrong. Wow. Which is it, Ben? He just died. (laughs) He just died, yeah. (laughs) Like this morning. No, see, the the problem was I thought you said Eddie Vedder at first. That's why I initially said alive, but (laughs) Van Halen's dead. (laughs) Bony, bony, bonus points. (laughs) <laughs> Valerie Bertinelli, is she alive or dead? She's alive. <laughs> Her career is dead. Oh, man. All right, let's go to Smitty. You ready, Smitty? Yes, sir, I am. <laughs> he just said it. Eddie Vedder. Oh, son of a bitch, I just gave you the answer. I believe it's the Eddie Vedder. He's alive. Of course he is. All right, Eddie Money. Uh, ben, Eddie Money. He died like two or three years ago. You think so? Pretty sure. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> I suckered you. All right, you keep three to scoring. three. Three to three. All right, let's go. Eddie Fisher. Eddie Fisher's long gone. Long gone and hard to find. That's right. Yeah. Carrie Fisher's long gone and hard to yeah. find. His daughter, too. Oh, my pop. And, and God knows her, her daughter's probably gone, too. <laughs> We're all evened up. No, it's four to three now. Ooh. Eddie Albert. You know him from Green Acres? Oh, yeah. He had one of the best lines I've ever heard in my life. What is it? In a movie. Is he alive or dead, first of all, Ben? He's alive. He's dead. Fuck. He's dead. Fuck. It was the beginning of Head Office, the movie Head Office. Yes. I think Judge Reinhold was in it. A bunch, bunch, of, bunch of people. He's flying in a helicopter. He's this really rich guy, and he's, he's with, talking to the pilot as he's flying. He looks out over the horizon of the city. He goes, you know, when I came to this town, I had less than $47 million in my pocket. <laughs> 
And now, I own all this. <laughs> he points <laughs> to the horizon. <laughs> and he did it so deadpan. I love it. Anyway, he's dead. Something gone. Is there another round here? We're going to try and catch up. One more. <sighs> Is it Smitty's turn? Yeah. Yes. Ed O'Neill. Ed O'Neill. Played Al, Al Bundy. I know who he is, and I know the answer. He is alive. You yes, son of a is. bitch. Yes, he is. How old is he for the point? Uh, he is uh, 71. 75. Did, did you ever take a guess on Eddie Vedder's uh, age no, for the didn't. point? No, he didn't. No. 31. Fi- no. 57. Eddie Vedder's 57? <laughs> He's born in 64. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> that, see, you should lose a point for that. Oh, Do I have another up. one here? Because here's your. Be, yeah, I got to catch up here. Two points and we tie. Okay, is he alive or dead? <sighs> Ed Too Tall Jones. He's dead. What did he die of? It's too tall. He. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, he's alive. <laughs> Is he still I alive? I was trying to get you to say what he died of. He died of being too tall. Uh, he's 70, and he's alive. No and he, guess what? He's still pretty fucking tall, I'll tell you what. He hasn't shrunk much. Boo! All right, so that's it. Uh, so Ben won. Got, huh? So Ben, did you win? win no, ben? Bill won. Bill won by what? Two points? Uh, uh, yeah. That Eddie Vedder, I'm, that was embarrassing. And for, for you, Bill Smith, you win the grand prize. What is the prize? It's hmm. the uh, the phrase that pays. <laughs> Did no, we have seriously. one this week? We're going to do it right now. Oh, the phrase that pays. If you are the, the phrase that pays this week yep. is you can win a coffee cake from my grandma's. Mm-hmm. If you if you tweet me at Planet Mikey with the phrase that pays, and it is okay. Ed, too tall. Jones is too. Fucking tall. <laughs> That's the phrase that pays. Yeah. You treat me that, you want a coffee cake from my grandma's, the greatest coffee cake on the face of the earth. You know? Next week, I'll tell you what's really going on inside my head. And I'll tell you, I don't give a shit anymore. I'm a little pissed off. You wait till next week. It'll be the end of the world as we know it. That's great. It starts with an earthquake. Birds and snakes, an aeroplane. Lenny Bruce is not afraid. Eye of a hurricane, listen to yourself churn. World serves its own needs, don't deserve your own needs. Speed it up a notch, speed run, no strength, the ladder starts to better. A fear of height, down height. And a fire, represented, ha, ha, no government for hire to combat sight. Left of west, and coming in a hurry, with the furies breathing down your neck. Team by team, reporters baffled. Trump to the Trump, look at that, find it. Oh, overflow, population, common food, but it'll do. Save yourself, serve yourself. World serves in its own needs. Listen to your heart bleed. Tell me with the rapture, all the reverend is the right, right. Ah, oh, this is killing me, Trope. Get it together, Joe. It's the end of the world as we know it. It's the end of the world as we know it. It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Six o'clock TV hour, don't get caught in a foreign tower. Slash burn me and return. Listen to yourself, jerk. Lock him in a uniform. Fuck burning lead, lady. Have your motor desk, automated center. I had a can of light of all the down, down. Watch your heel, crush, crush. Oh, oh, this means no fear. This is so hard, true. Joe, just get your shit together. Offer me solutions, alternatives, and I decline. It's the end of the world as we know it at Shaw's. It's the end of the world as we know it. It's the end of the world as we know it. Can you believe it? I feel fine. You don't look that good. Speak for yourself, Toadface. This is the hardest song we've ever done, True. All right, here we go. Oh, I'm tired. It's the end of the world as we know it. It's the end of the world as we know it. It's the end of the world as we know it. And I feel fine, except for this lower GI problem giving me cramps. <laughs>